Today on Behind the Frame, things are going to get a little frosty, so freeze right where you are. Stay around and learn some stuff. Welcome to Behind the Frame, where we show you how to make props and effects from your favorite movies, TV shows, video games, and more. I'm Scott Nicewander, and earlier this week we showed you a video where this happens. You have a problem. I'm going to take you to the high. <laughs> You may know that we were trying to celebrate the Man of Steel by releasing Superman-related videos. That was supposed to be one of them, but we wrote it before the Man of Steel came out, so we didn't know that, spoilers, Superman doesn't use his ice breath in the movie, so... This is awkward. But we did it anyway, and I thought the effect looked pretty nifty, and I wanted to share it with all of you guys, so, for the entirety of the effect, I used Trap Code Particular. It's kinda pricey, but it's totally worth it. The amount of stuff you can do with this software is insane. Plus, this is my first time really diving into it, and I just barely scratched the surface of all the stuff you can do with it. So I'm sure as time goes on and I get to use it more, I can make this effect look even better. But, let me show you how I did it this time around. And in case you wanted to follow along, we put a link in the description below where you can download the video of Cameron for free. So first we drag our footage into a new composition and we create a new solid. Slide the solid layer to the point where your actor is just about to blow. Then we apply Trap Code Particular to the solid. We can hide that layer for now. In the Emitter drop-down menu, click on the stopwatch next to position XY to create a keyframe. Then go frame by frame, making sure the little circle is right on your actor's mouth. This is where the particles that make up our ice breath will come out. After we've tracked to the best of our ability, we need to start setting up this layer to be the basis on which our other particle layers will be built on. For this effect, I used four different particle layers that are all very similar but have minor changes. So I need to set up this first layer to be the template on which we build the other layers. So in the emitter menu, we'll turn the particles per second up to 400. This means that every second the layer will emit 400 particles. We'll then change the direction from uniform to directional. This way, the particles don't spew out everywhere, but instead go in one direction. Baby, you light up my world like nobody else. That was a video I made a while ago. It's no longer on the internet. Makes me sad. Moving right along, we'll turn the velocity to 3000. This is the speed that the particles will be shooting out of the emitter. Now we'll play around with our X and Y rotation until it looks like the particles are shooting out in the direction we want. Then in the particle tab, we turn the size of the particles up to 70 and the size random up to 90. Size random gives some difference that your particles aren't all exactly the same size, but it kind of makes them varying in sizes a little bit, a little bit more organic. Then we turn the opacity down to five and it actually appears to be taking shape. Now we get to the tricky slash fun part, depending on how you look at it. Size over life and opacity over life. You see, a particle has a life. It just means how long it is in existence from the time that it shoots out of the emitter. For here, we have it set to the default of about three seconds. Opacity over life, you can just click on this downward slope. This makes it so over those three seconds of life, the particle will fade out of existence smoothly. Size over life is really the tricky one, and the reason we're doing it in the first place is because of how Superman's powers work. And to explain that further, we need a change of scenery. I'm about to say something that might sound a little crazy to some of you guys. Superman does not have ice breath. And by that I mean he can't breathe out ice. You see, there's no Kryptonian gland that makes it so he can inhale normal air and output frosty hair. Instead, he has super breath, which allows him to inhale large quantities of air and expel it with tremendous force. And when Superman purses his lips and creates that tiny opening for air to be released from, the air that comes out has drastically reduced in temperature. Like when you blow on your hand with an open mouth, or blow on your hand with pursed lips. The pursed lips is colder because of the Joule-Thompson effect, which says that a gas or liquid will change in temperature when forced through a valve. Now, Superman does this on a massive scale every time that he uses his ice breath. Watch Comic Misconceptions every Wednesday. Why is any of this important? Well, for our effect, we don't want it to look like Cameron is blowing cold air out of his lungs. We want it to look like he's blowing normal air and it's turning cold as it's coming out. And that is where size over life comes into play. So we need to draw a curve in this little box that kind of looks like this. 
And what that's doing is it's making it so the particles are very small when they first shoot out of Cameron's mouth, but then grow in size quickly afterward. And that way we have a small gap between the ice breath and Cameron's lips. Now we duplicate the layer three times so that there are four in total. For convenience sake, I like to hide any layer I'm not working on when it comes to particles. They could take ages to render. Ice ages, even. Eh? No. No, but, uh, you know, they, they really do tend to freeze my computer. So. I had like 12 of them in the script. I just didn't want you guys to hate me. So this second particle layer that we'll be working on, I turned into like the center core type thing, how things are gonna be moving quicker in here and it's gonna be a lot more stuff happening, I imagine. So we change the particles per second to 300, then we drop the directional spread to three. This is essentially the spray of your particles, whether they stick together closely or fan out. Then we up the velocity to 3500 and we have this. For our third layer, I wanted there to be something that looked like chunks of ice flying out, and I wanted there to be a lot of them. So we raise the particles per second to 700, change the direction spread to about 12, go crazy with the velocity and make it about 5,000 or so to make them look like deadly fast shards of stuff. Then, for a particle type in the particle tab, we change that to a streaklet. And lastly, we up the opacity to 15 to really make them prominent. It looks like garbage now, I know, but that's the beauty of effects work. It all sucks till the end. And for our last particle layer, I wanted to make some slow moving fog around the ice breath to really help it blend in with the scene. So I made the particles per second 600, changed the directional spread close to 30, lowered the velocity to 2500, made the opacity 2, and now we get to play with physics. To make it a little bit more realistic, I went into the physics tab and under the sub menu for air, I turned air resistance up to 1 and spin amplitude to 3. Air resistance simulates how particles would gradually slow down if they were reacting with the air, and spin amplitude makes it so that they don't just slow down, but they kind of fray off in different directions. Lastly, we need to turn on the motion blur for the particle layers and for the comp, add some color grading and some sound effects, and now we have our final product looking like this. And that's really all that goes into making this effect. I hope you guys enjoyed chilling with me. Huh? No, but if you did like it, please subscribe for more Behind the Frame. If you guys have an effect idea that you want me to try out, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to try it out. You can also like NerdSync Productions on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter, at Scott Nicewander. And join us next week on Behind the Frame when Josh shows you how to make an awesome Man of Steel prop. We'll see you guys next time. Hey. Hey, guys. There aren't, um... Any, like, bloopers for this one, I guess, so... Subscribe! Yeah... Okay, go team. I just... I guess I'll just leave now. It's the way I came.